He's carrying on a decades-old tradition on Louisville's Restaurant Row. Right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, we have the executive chef of Jack Fry's. I'm going to figure eight in the pan. It's fancy. It's a secret. You ever do a pirouette? Or... <laughs> Ready to reveal the secrets to some of his signature recipes at his legendary restaurant. I'm Kevin Harnett at Bourbon Barrel Foods Kitchen Studio, and this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hi everybody and welcome to Bourbon Barrel Foods. I'm Kevin Martin with Secrets of Louisville Chefs. It's the show that takes you inside the kitchens and the minds of local chefs and restaurants so you can learn the secrets to some of the very best recipes they have to offer. And today we have one of Louisville's best. In fact, he's the head chef at Jack Fry's, winner of countless Best of Louisville awards. And as always, we have America's chief entertaining officer, Tim Laird. So without further ado, let's get the show started hey, with our co-host. Hey, oh, right, what a good audience, look at that. They're hungry. They are hungry, they're awesome, they're here. I'm excited because I'll tell you what, McLean Brown, what a chef he is at Jack Fry's. So, oh. What a restaurant in the history, the tradition that place has. Absolutely, and it continues with uh, with him. And I'll tell you what, Chef Brown has some exciting things. Well, so, let's uh, get what to do you it. say we get cooking? Here he is, Chef McLean Brown. <laughs> Hello, Chef. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh. I'm exciting. All the things that's going on down at uh, Jack Fry's. Of course, you're uh, uh, keeping some of the traditional recipes, but also adding some of your favorites and some new things down there to keep yeah, it exciting. Yeah, we'll be doing a couple of those uh, new dishes today. Great. So. What are you going to show us today, Chef? Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, hand-cut grouper here with a uh, white wine clam sauce with some uh, mussels and uh, finished with a uh, a little bit of frisé, arugula, and uh, salt roast celery. Oh, nice. Let's start by heating a saute pan up here with a little bit of vegetable oil. Uh, you can use clarified butter as well. Um, we've got about a five ounce piece of grouper here. Since we've got some mussels and clams as well, we don't need a huge piece of grouper. All right, so you want to wait until your pan gets uh, just to a smoking point. That okay. way the fish will release, it won't stick to the pan. And there, there it is, it's starting to yep. smoke a little bit right there. there, and you kind of make a figure eight in the pan. Give it a little I, shake just to make good. sure. That was so nice I didn't know that this kind of gets. It. It's fancy. It's a, it secret. It's a secret. I've never done the figure eight. Mm -hmm. Ever do a pirouette? Or <laughs> <laughs> On occasion. Yeah. Only only special occasions. You do the uh, figure eight when you have skate fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> never mind. Terrible. Right. That's terrible. Yeah. Kevin, I'm sorry. Terrible. Yeah. I'm sweating over here. <laughs> Yeah, my sous chefs always give me a hard time about my corny jokes. My sous chef Duncan Williams has helped me out today. Uh, oh, very good. He's turning into me. He tells more corny jokes than I do now. <laughs> oh, we should mic him up and bring him up. <laughs> oh, it's right. It's a cooking show, not the comedy show. Right. We're oh, one shoot. step away from the different. Not. <laughs> I know. And All right. really, you just let it sit there, right? Just you want to get it. Every now nice and then, just check it to make sure it's not sticking. Um, All right. So as soon as you see that golden brown starting to form, beautiful. You can throw it in the oven, sear side down. But what I like about that fish is it's thick enough uh, that you don't have to worry about overcooking it too. You want to uh, you want it to be cooked through. You don't want to cook it, but not overcook. Mid rare, like a salmon or a tuna. Uh, you want it so you can put a knife easily right through it. Perfect. All right. So while that cooks, we're going to focus on our sauce here. Like I said, uh, you've got that uh, bacon, clam, white wine sauce here with a little cream, uh, celery root. I take and I salt roast it. It gives it a really sweet flavor. Um, what you do, you put the celery root in a pan okay. deep enough to cover it, and you just pour kosher salt all the way over the top, and then put it in the oven with skin on it and everything. Uh, it takes about an hour, and then you take it out. The skin comes right off, and it gives it this really beautiful aromatic sweetness to wow. it. Wow. And I'll tell you, this sauce looks great. I mean, you can just tell how rich and beautiful so, this thing is. I've got some russet potato in there cooking with the clams. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to add some mussels All as right. well. And you always want to make sure your mussels and clams open all the way. If they don't open all the way, they're dead. So you don't want to eat those. Always clean them very thoroughly. Remove the beards from the mussels. And as you can see, the mussels are just starting to open up there. Clams take a lot longer than the mussels do, so you want to start with that with the potatoes. And the mussels, they don't or take a long time at all. I no, mean, no, like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And really, they're uh, affordable. I mean, mussels are... Uh, I think I pay about $2 a pound for them. They're really not bad at all, and they add so much flavor to the sauce. The all right, so since our clams are open up, 
Uh, we're just about done here. You want to make sure the potatoes are cooked through okay. and your cauliflower and celery egg are hot. Uh, we're going to finish with a pad of butter. We'll mount that in. When you put your butter in a sauce, you want to remove it from the heat immediately, otherwise it tends to split. The water content um, and the fat make a really nasty looking sauce. So you take it off the heat, swirl that in, I throw in a little bit of arugula. And the arugula in at the end too, because you uh, don't want to overcook Just that. wilt it ever so slightly, yes. All right. We'll put this down, a nice little cast iron. sauce looks so delicious and rich. The fish doesn't really take that long since I'm cutting about a five ounce portion. Take it out of there, you've got that nice brown butter. Beautiful. Oh, man. I'm going to baste that fish a couple Good. times to finish. Oh, <laughs> all that nutty, I mean it's just <laughs> nutty, delicious. I'm about ready to rush the stage, Look at Jim. I know. Look at that beautiful glaze that puts on there too. Just oh, and that actually actually is French style of cooking too, where you're basting it with the butter and it's actually cooking it just a little bit more to finish yep. it off. Yeah, <laughs> this looks incredible. How dare you say that? I like the, I like this uh, technique though too. Now, is this how you serve it in the restaurant? Uh huh. Not in the cast iron, no, but okay. We try and do this to every order of fish, but when you have 20 of them come in at the same time, it's a little oh, different. Oh, yeah, right. That's what I was curious. <laughs> My line cooks would kill me if I made them do it to every single one. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from the line chef, you know what, that's, you know what it's all about. Oh, yeah. So you're, uh, you're actually nice to your line chefs. Yep. Okay. All right. This is a fish tongs, by the way. These are, these are specialty <laughs> items. <laughs> all right. Wow. That go. looks fantastic. Of course, a little more olive oil. <laughs> A little salt and pepper too. A little salt and pepper. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic, Chef. What do you think? Yeah. Does that complete the dish? That's, That's it. it. That's it. Absolutely. That looks fantastic. And you know, the uh, big question is, how does it taste? One of the lucky studio audience members is going to have a chance to take a taste and see if McLean Brown is living up to the great reputation <laughs> and tradition of Jack Fry's. When we come back, that plus Tim Laird, you're mixing up a cocktail. I have a fun uh, cherry-infused Manhattan we're going to show you. We're so. going to give you the secrets oh, to that. Yeah. Up, you're watching <laughs> Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Wow. Good job, Thank you. Oh, my God. Bourbon Barrel Foods, I'm Kevin Hart, Ed McLean has been hard at work. More secrets to come from him in just a second, but first, wow, we have this unbelievable seafood dish that he's prepared, and Woodford is here. Woodford, born and raised right here in Louisville. Yes, sir. So you know how good our restaurant scene is here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've been to Jack Fry? Many times. <laughs> One of my favorite places. Yeah, well, you're going to have a chance to take a taste here. As a guest of Northwestern Mutual, we have a great studio audience out here today. You all look fantastic. <laughs> Everybody, just so you know, is going to have a chance to take a taste, but Woodford's up first to see how Chef McLean Brown did. Dive on in there, right. take a taste. We've got the fish, the mussels, the clams. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, is that a good oh my goodness? Good. All right. Woo. Very good. We thought so. Jack Fry is one of the premier restaurants here in Louisville, of course. McLean Brown at the helm there. Woodford, thank you. We thank appreciate you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Enjoy. <laughs> Wow. And, well, Hello, Kevin. Timmy, we're uh, back uh, here. And yeah. He has to have one of your you know, I love favorite that. names. I Woodford, love that. Right? Woodford. I'll tell you what. He's very popular, Woodford is. <laughs> said his middle name was Reserve. I know. It was. Anyway, well, that is actually going to inspire our cocktail here. Awesome. Uh, uh, this is what I call a cherry infused Manhattan. Of course, cherry part of the Manhattan scene. But here's a little, here's something I like to do. Um, I'll take a bottle of Woodford. And drink uh, it, uh, yes, <laughs> responsibly. Um, anyways, no, so I'll, I'll uh, reserve it in a little bit of a bowl over here. Okay, then I fill the bottle with uh, cherries, and of course, the uh, you know, the uh, cherries that aren't the ones with the artificial color that bright oh, red, yeah. uh, but you can get some nice uh, uh, Bing cherries or whatever they want, the ones uh, that have been marinated in maraschino or those. Put that in the bottle, pour the Woodford back in, 
and a day later you have this wonderful cherry infused Woodford. So uh, for this cocktail, it's easy. Well, you mentioned that for this cocktail, but around the holiday season, oh. you see this all the time with cinnamons and vanillas and anything Absolutely. can you, be infused. You know, dried apples is yeah. great. So I'll put dried apples in there and maybe one cinnamon stick. Uh, it, 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 get an, it takes about a day and you have this wonderful flavor and it'll last for a long time. Uh, dried figs. Uh, so really it's fun to infuse uh, bourbons and it's just delicious. So anyway, I'm going to take this, put in my shaker with ice and let's see about an ounce and a half per drink so but I'm gonna share so this will be about bottle. three ounce and I know the chef might want to have a little taste so I'll uh, I'll pour some extra in there just like that all right well heck hey <laughs> <laughs> that goes in now usually you put sweet vermouth in here but you know what it's already sweetened because of the cherry so I don't okay. even need that but I do need a little bit of uh, uh, bitters goes in so a couple splashes and I'm using the uh, bourbon barrel foods uh, spiced cherry so again the theme continues a little spiced cherry Can bitters. Can you explain bitters? I think that's yeah, it, I'll tell you what the bitters uh, are used in uh, cocktails and they were they start out for medicinal purposes but it's really a, a high alcohol distillate that has been infused with herbs spices and all kinds of different ingredients but it really makes a nice cocktail it balances out the cocktail is what it does. So, a little bit goes a long way. Oh, it does. You just need a couple of dashes. Anyway, you give this a good shake. I promise the chef. So. Is that a good it, shake? We're sh yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> anyway, with that, into a little cocktail glass. Boom. Can't forget the chef. A little more for Kevin. McLean, come on in. Come on in, McLean. All right, a little more for the chef. <laughs> Got to take care of the chef, you know, that's a big thing. <laughs> anyway, I start it, then uh, end with one of those cherries. How about that? And here's to uh, Chef McLean Brown. Cheers. 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 See how we did? Great. Wow. How is that? That's pretty amazing. Isn't that nice? That's that great, really, yeah. well, let me, let me just check. <laughs> that is good. Well, it's amazing how you can oh. really taste the cherry. The cherries there. I, mean, I know that's the. <laughs> the end goal there, but it's, you know, but, but, the, you think key, with, you but know. the key to this, it's not overly sweet. You know, I still want, I want to taste the Woodford. I don't want to, uh, you know, cover up my spirit, but I also want a little bit of sweetness because it is a, a Manhattan that's usually with sweet vermouth, but I'll tell you what, I think we hit the well, spot very Pretty easy. easy cocktail to make too. Something else Two you can do at home now that you know the secrets. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Right. One group down here with the secrets on the drinks. We still have more to cook. We do. All we'll do right. Next. Chef Brown, what are we going to be doing next? All right, we're going to do a uh, braised pork shank today with a, a caramelized turnip risotto and uh, just a kind of a classic Madeira veal reduction. You start by taking a shank and I, I tie it in butcher's twine. That way it won't fall apart. It stays together. Because the point of braising, you cook it for you know four, six, Long eight, time. twelve hours. That meat wants to pull from the bone and it falls apart. So if you tie it nice and tight with butcher's twine, when you braise it and sear it, it stays together. Great idea. Another for secret reveal too. This is pre-braised. Got uh, it. Obviously, we don't have no, six we hours don't have six to hours. wait here. <laughs> so, uh, I've got my Madeira veal reduction in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock just to thin it out so it doesn't get too seared to be honest. I put this in the oven to warm. Perfect. We'll go ahead and glaze that just a little bit. Beautiful. <laughs> it looks nice so good. Nice and I just want to grab it. Yeah. Looks, looks finished already. I know. <laughs> Almost. We don't have six hours, but we do have a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll finish up the braised pork shank with Chef McLean Brown from Jack Fry's. Stay with us. You're watching Secrets of Louisville Chefs. It's a little chef. So I'm Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird, and we're cooking with McLean Brown from Jack Fry's. And we've made some fantastic dishes so far, Tim. We oh. have the, I mean, this is unbelievable. I see risotto sitting in front of us. Love we're, risotto and a braised pork shank. How about uh, that? Oh, anything, does that sound you know, great? I'm a fan of anything that takes a long while to cook because when it comes out, it just melts in your mouth. I know. It, it, and I'll tell you what, it's just perfect. And uh, I can't wait to finish this dish up. Let's see what's next. All right, McLean. All right. I can't wait. This is absolutely incredible. Our uh, braised pork shank is in the uh, oven finishing mm -hmm. off and this lovely risotto here tell me about this uh, this is a uh, par cooked what we do we take the uh, risotto we start with uh, sauteing garlic and shallot um, 
in olive oil and then we toast the rice in the olive oil, but okay. you don't want to get any color on it. You just want to get that nice kind of nuttiness. And then uh, you start with white wine, you reduce that until it's a syrup. Uh, then you add chicken stock a little bit at a time, just to, just enough to cover, stirring the entire time. That way you really get all the starches out of the rice and it makes like it makes a really creamy sauce oh, around the rice. I was going to say, just a nice little creamy texture of, uh, of the risotto. Uh -huh. And you want to have hot chicken stock on your stove. That you Don't add, add cold so stock to the risotto, cold. no. Another great secret. It'll uh, stop the cooking process and almost kind of shock the rice. So you want to maintain the temperature throughout its cooking great process. Great idea. Great idea. And I'll tell you, risotto is so wonderful. I mean, this is a base for uh, not only your uh, braised pork shank, but uh, all kinds of things you can mm -hmm. use. And uh, just to do a little bit of a play on a traditional risotto, I take uh, turnips, which are great this time of year as well, and I caramelize those with uh, butter and sugar, and then I puree it with a little stock and cream, and I finish the risotto with that. Uh, so it makes great. it really kind of sweet. Fun seasonal. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's what's great. Uh, I mean, all through the seasons, you could. Uh, have different flavors, whatever's fresh, do some different things. Exactly. All right. That smells wonderful, too, just as that's cooking. Oh, those flavors are coming out. Yeah. A little Make salt sure pepper. We're seasoned. And we'll give it a little taste here. See how far along we are. What do you think, Chef? Pretty good. A little more salt. That's why you taste, just checking mm -hmm. for that seasoning. And be careful with the salt because the classic way to finish risottos with. Uh, uh, Reggiano cheese. Which oh, so has, that's going to add more saltiness. Salt. Yeah. Okay. So we're about there. You want a little bit of a bite to the rice, but not too much. Not mushy. Exactly. All right, so we're going to add our cheese. Take it off the heat as well because, uh, like I spoke about earlier, you can break the sauce. You got oh, that cheese. would break too, the cheese. Exactly. I forgot about because of the cream. Uh -huh. and the so we got and cheese, butter. Kevin, more butter. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we've got. <laughs> Kevin's happy about that. Our caramelized turnip puree here. Oh, that's right. And I like my risotto not too stiff, so I'm gonna add a little bit more hot stock to that, so it kind of falls on the plate. <laughs> that is, that is, when you look at that, that's creamy. I mean, that is. And there's no cream in it besides uh, from the turnip puree. That's all the starch from the rice, the arborio rice. It's really high starch content. A lot of people think there's cream in risotto. There's, there's not. There's not. All right, and that's just about there. Perfect. That's All the way right. it's supposed to look, Kevin. Yeah. Mine never turns out like that. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, it's not supposed to look like oatmeal like at your yeah. house. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we're having grits. I'm like, no, it's worth throwing over. Eat them. <laughs> All right. Kind of serve it <laughs> offset. So that way we have a nice pool for the sauce, OK? Oh, perfect. Leave room for the sauce. Let's see if I can get this twine off here. I'm mm -hmm. making a fool of myself. Like I said, great idea, though. Keeps everything intact. <laughs> hey, no strings attached. Uh. <laughs> All right, so oh we got our gosh. risotto, pork shank, Madeira veal reduction here, as you can see in the oven, reduced a little bit, got nice and syrupy. And then I, just for color, I take a little uh, shaved purple cabbage and just right over top. Beautiful. And that's all she wrote. There it is. Wow. Fantastic. Look at that. I all I want to say, Chef, is Shanks. I'm telling you what a great job. <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you what. You're doing such a great job over there. Fantastic. I mean, the history of Jack Fry's. We're so proud to have you and Jack Fry's uh, as one of our finest uh, Louisville restaurants. So thank you. Thank you for all you do. And uh, thank you for sharing the secrets to this wonderful uh, dish. Thank McLean, you. thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you sharing the secrets. Absolutely. Well, Hopefully you. you guys got something out of that, didn't you? <laughs> And we hope you did, too, at home. We appreciate you watching. If you're looking for the recipes, you can find not only McLean's recipes, but all of the restaurants we featured on our show, Secrets of Little Chefs, Tim's Drink Recipes, online. It's on our website, newlocaltv.com. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Cisco of Louisville, the Kentucky Beef Council, and Universal Linens. You've been watching Secrets of Louisville Chefs. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harned, and we'll see you next time. Oh, great job, Chef. Fantastic. That looks great.